Uh, actually, I just got an update from our fantastic producer. It seems like we have Tim Ord on the line as well now. <laughs> Tim, how are you doing? All right. Good. Okay, so we're on. All right. Fantastic. <laughs> I know. This this tech yeah, is sure. always an uphill battle, isn't it? Yeah, oh yeah. Sometimes the line's not good or whatever. And <laughs> so, but anyhow, we got her done pretty much on time. So, good deal. Uh, let's look at uh, let's take a look at chart one to see so. where we are. Perfect. I got it up right now. So, all right. Okay. We talked about uh, it's a little messy. You know, I pointed out the bicycle we got here. Which I again I got long a little bit too early, but anyhow I, I stayed long because the bicycle really generated a stronger bicycle than I anticipated. And I covered that last uh, today Thursday Tuesday, uh, so anyhow we're still on the bicycle. But uh, what I want to point out on this chart, I this is a daily SPY, and I got uh, circled in red on the chart where the uh, market. Produ uh, got above the upper or lower Bollinger Band, and I circled those times in red. And so we're above it right now. If you look at the current price, you know we're actually 100% above it. Normally, you get about 50% or more above it or below it, sometimes less. Uh, the market's usually going to stall. So I don't think this rally on a very short-term basis is not going to go real far. We did have a super big gap yesterday. It's like over two, I don't know what it was, 2% give or take gap yesterday. But breakaway gaps usually don't get filled. Uh, okay. So if you have a breakaway gap, don't count on that getting filled. But the other gaps after a breakaway gap a lot of times do. So I'm thinking this is probably a, a breakaway gap. We're not going to pull back down, fill the gap, which is around 575. What I do think may happen on a short-term basis, I got a dotted uh, horizontal line there around 585. Uh, I think we may pull back to that line, find support, which is basically the previous highs, mm -hmm. then, uh, then keep on moving higher. So uh, not real bearish here, uh, kind of a, a surge up. Uh, uh, you know, we had uh, yesterday, we're up a little bit higher today, uh, but probably some sort of a short-term consolidation back to 80, 585 is going to materialize. Uh, and it may stay there for a few days before it, it, ending higher. Of all the seasonality periods uh, of the year, this is the most bullish quarter. And this quarter usually runs into January. Okay. Uh, so you'll have maybe some down weeks, but not down months. Uh, okay. So uh, trends up, we're going to go higher. Uh, how much higher? It's kind of hard to say. Uh, if the market gets too exuberant here, it could kill a rally. But uh, as, so let's kind of look out. Well, let me uh, ask a the bigger trend. Quickly before, what, what, how are you determining, just so I'm, I'm clear on it, the, that it's a breakaway gap and not one that could be tested again in, in theory? I'm just kind of curious what you're looking at that makes it like, okay, is it because we like shot right over that top of the Bollinger Band? Well, it's not that. It, it came off of a low. Okay. We had a, a low. Um, so it has to come off of some sort of a low. Okay. Uh, okay. If it kind of just in the middle of a trading range type things, then, you know, it's, it's not. But this was a low that developed, you know, it took about three days for that low to develop. Okay. Then you had a sign of strength off that low, and it's exactly what you want to have. Ideally, for bottoms, you want to have a, a a selling climax into it. If you notice on this chart, let's go back to chart one. Yeah. Uh, if you look at the volume chart, we did have a selling climax. Selling climaxes are when the, the volume jumps 30% or more compared to the previous days, and that's approximately what that one did. Okay. So I'm calling that a selling climax. We also closed below the lower Bollinger Band on that day, we had a trend close 1.15. Next day, we had a trend close of 1.2 with 240 down tick readings. And again, on day three, which was two days ago, or uh, one, two, three, four days ago, uh, we had 1.22 trend with 328 down tick readings. So that showed a lot of panic on a three day period. Uh, so everything matched. So now you got to have a sign of strength off the bottom. That confirms the bottom. If you don't have a sign of strength off the are you going to come back down again? Okay. Well, yesterday's volume was a sign of strength. So we got a uh, selling climax, then a sign of strength. That's definition of a bottom. So a, big, a bottom was produced. Uh, they're not going to let you in easy, but 585 is probably your best bet if, uh, if we do get there. Um, most likely, that's going to be a, a pretty rock-solid support. 
and then from there we're going to move higher. So uh, looks good. So let's look at the weekly chart. This uh, neck push is the next chart. Uh, let me get another chart up here. Okay, uh, this is just the weekly chart. So if the market actually goes up too fast, it's not really a good sign. And this chart goes back a couple of years. It's kind of rare it does it, but when 50% of the trading range uh, gets above the upper Bollinger Band or below, usually you at least get a short-term reversal in the market. Since it's a weekly chart, sometimes these reversals can last a month or two. Uh, but a lot of times they last a week, two weeks, three weeks, not real long. But that's the reason why you want the current. Uh, if you notice, we got a, a green square up there where we currently are showing where we are uh, compared to where the Bollinger Band are, Bollinger Band is. And we're right at the Bollinger Band now. So we need close above 50% uh, above that trading range. And if we do, then that's going to at least put a, a damper in the market. So you really don't want the market to go up real fast because yeah. it, uh, it'll just kill the rally. And so far on the weekly time frames, we're doing actually pretty good. So even in, on a daily chart, if we do get a minor pullback on a bigger time frame, that'll actually be bullish because that'll keep from the, uh, the weekly market closing above the upper Bollinger Band by 50%. So uh, if you notice back in, uh, looks like about July there, you get a 50% close above the upper Bollinger Band and you had and that lasted uh, a good month there. So uh, we don't want that to happen here. So you want the market to go up but not too fast right so and it's going up uh, decently so we're good you know how high is high uh it's hard to say for sure here uh, but in general i think we're going to rally to all the way into year end so it's uh, uh you know i don't know uh, i'm hoping if you go back to chart one yeah uh i'm hoping we pull back to 585 right that just it'll be just take some stretch of that rubber band out of the market and uh, in a bigger time frame that would actually be more bullish so these markets that rock, rock it up just don't last oh, that's so I don't want this one to rock it up totally so. yeah Tim stay right there folks we'll be right back with Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle after this break welcome back everyone we are joined right now by Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle if you want to see more of what he's got you can go to the Ord hyphen Oracle Dot com strongly recommend checking that out additionally you can go over to tfnn.com go right over to the services tab and he has two fantastic webinars for you these are the secret science of market tops and then six secret ratios every trader should know and for the deal of 149 dollars each that is quite a steal tim welcome back we were looking at chart two before we went to the break which is the uh, the weekly spy Right. Okay, that shows where we are. Kind of like the weekly is okay. Yeah. So let's go to uh, chart number three. Okay. Uh, this one will actually, you know, since it's on a monthly time frame, this is a monthly uh, SPY. Uh, it's a real good indicator. It just kind of tells you a warning that uh, consolidations in the cards or not. But the monthlies, you know, it's a little bit bigger, so they can warn a little bit more. Uh, that normally if you get 50% above the upper Bollinger Band, at a minimum, a lot of times you get at least a month, if not two months of consolidation. And I circled and read the times when that happened. And so far, if you look at the monthly chart uh, where we are, which is that shaded green area, we're, we're, we're fine. You know, we, we're, we're not into an area where an immediate term high can form or at least a multi-month high can form. So... Uh, you know, we're trending good. We're, we're kind of hugging the upper Bollinger Band, which is ideal. Uh, so how long can this market go? And, well, um, it's hard to say. But to me, I have no signs whatsoever of a top that may be formed. Uh, I really can't see a real long out, but I think we're, we're fine the rest of this year. Not saying every week's going to be an up week. But the market's going to be a lot higher than we are right now by the end of the year. I'll put it that way. Right. So it's a good time to be long and stay long for right now. Uh, so decent bicycle a couple of days ago or uh, several days ago. And uh, don't see any trouble whatsoever. We had a selling climax turned into a buying uh, sign of strength. And those lead to uh, multi-week rallies. So everything looks good. 
Right on. Uh, we can start going to the gold market. Yeah, big time. There's been some movement in the gold the past few days, especially with the election. Yeah. So. Yeah, there's there's something going something that real significant, but I want to point it out. Uh, chart number four is just a monthly chart. This is a gave a buy signal back. I think it was May 31st of this year on the monthly time frames. Uh, the red, the blue lines uh, are the. T uh, actually, I should probably describe what this chart is. The bottom window is the uh, monthly up down volume with this Bollinger Band. Next higher window is a monthly advanced decline. Bollinger Band on the monthly time frame. Uh, the buy signals come when uh, both indicators close above the mid Bollinger Band, which is the blue line. The sell signals come when both indicators close below the mid Bollinger Band, uh, which is the red lines. Uh, again, we got a buy signal back in May 31st of this year, uh, you know, showing the up down volume or the up volume exceeding the down volume and the advancing issues exceeding the declining issues. That's pretty much a definition of an uptrend. So the monthlies uh, are on a buy signal. These signals uh, on average last at least a year and a half all the way up to four years. So we got at least another year to go on this buy signal. There'll be some consolidations along the way, uh, but the bigger picture is outright bullish. Let's flip to the weekly chart, which is the next chart. Yep. Uh, this chart gave a bicycle in March of this year. Same scenario. Uh, since it's uh, on a weekly time frame, you have to close above the weekly bid Mollinger band, band to get a bicycle. We did that in March of this year. Uh, really no divergence showing up yet. Uh, basically, both indicators are making higher highs as the uh, GDX is making higher highs. Uh, so that's good. So let's look at the short term, see what's going on. And this is a short term. Uh, this is uh, still the up down volume advanced decline indicators. The bottom window is advanced decline daily cumulative. Next higher window is the up down volume cumulative on a daily, and the top window is GDX. And GDX pulled back here. Uh, previous times when GDX pulled back, both indicators made higher lows. This is not this time around it didn't happen. GDX pulled back, made a lower low below the previous swing low. And both indicators made lower lows below the previous lows. So it depends, you know, that's that's not really a kind of both indicators are currently matching what GDX did. But what it depends on is how this next rally will perform. If we get, if GDX goes up and tests the previous high up around that 44, 45 area, or most likely breaks the new high. <clears throat> yep. Let me get a drink here. And both indicators failed to break above their previous highs, and that's a divergence. And that may flip the market sideways. I don't think it'll be any top of any consequence, but I've been saying quite a long while here that we had an upside target around 45. Mm -hmm. And that's pretty much what's been hit. But I didn't see any divergence. That's why we hit that 45. But since the market has pulled back, broke a previous low, and both indicators broke the previous low, that's kind of a warning sign, not a major top of any consequence because the weeklies and dailies are very far from a, a bearish setup. But it could it produce a trading range where the current low, say it's around 37, give or take, yeah. and the previous high is around, say, 44, 45. Market may just kind of flip sideways here. It depends how the next rally performs. So that's what I'm kind of waiting for. Consolidations in general are pretty good. This market... If you notice, it started off in March, and it's pretty much gone straight up. I mean, it's been back and forth, but it's been making higher highs, higher lows all the way up. This is the first time we broke bro a previous low uh, on GDX, and a lot, and both indicators did so too. So kind of a warning sign yeah. that the market is due for some sort of consolidation. But the consolidation I'm going to see is probably between 37 to 45. I, I see. think I might just bang around there. It may bang around there for several weeks, and if not a couple of months, uh, to build cause for the next rally. And I think that's probably what's going to happen here. So, but it's going to be a rotation going on. What has been leading over the last six months or so, or seven months, uh, some of those stocks will take a rest, and there'll be a new uh, batch, I guess you might say, coming to the forefront that uh, may. Uh, 
start to zing higher. I think this, all this is is going to be just a rotation in a market. Uh, so I think it's starting to look like they're going to go back down to the smaller issues uh, or the big ones took off. The generals, I guess you might say, took off and some of the soldiers are starting to come alive. Right. That's what I'm starting to see. So <laughs> not, not a big uh, uh, concern, but uh, it may flip sideways. But that doesn't mean gold stocks are not going to keep going up. It means to me, I think it's going to be a rotation. Fantastic. So. Tim, thank you so much for joining us today. We'll see you Tuesday, okay? All right. Sounds good. Thank you. Folks, stay right there. We'll be right back. 